Have you ever wondered what happens to celebrities when they're just not famous anymore? While some of their careers just run out of momentum, others have screeched to a halt thanks to scandals and bad press. After being brought back to normality, many of your famous former stars have taken surprising career changes, from cooking, preaching, sweeping up hair, or even street busking. Let's take a look at how some celebrities survived after their careers were over. Louis C.K. At his peak, six-time Emmy Award-winning comedian, writer, and filmmaker Louis C.K. was selling out Madison Square Gardens and making regular appearances on late-night talk shows. He also appeared repeatedly on Forbes' list of highest-paid comedians and even earned $52 million in the year leading up to June 2017. It seemed like life couldn't get any better for the hotshot comedian. But for lack of an explanation that would otherwise get this video demonetized, Louis couldn't keep it in his pants. In the wake of the hashtag MeToo movement, a hideous scandal dashed his career into the dirt almost overnight. His second comedy special with Netflix, part of a deal worth $35 million, was immediately canceled. HBO cut all ties with him, and his upcoming projects were terminated. Since then, his face, thankfully, hasn't been seen on any major screen. So what's a publicly shamed comic to do when he's fallen so far from grace? Well, he's back doing one of the only things he knows how, stand-up comedy. But definitely not for the prices he used to charge. In North Carolina back in 2019, tickets for his show worth $49.50 were being sold online for just $9 due to lack of demand. In fact, one reporter from the LA Times managed to get a ticket for just $4. But even then, some of his shows, like the one in San Jose, were protested by locals. Somehow, it's hard to see the funny side of this attempted career comeback. While he might not be entertaining anymore, I think you'll find that I certainly am. So why don't you hit that like and subscribe button? I put out new content every day to amuse the masses with amazing facts and unbelievable stories. And all with my pants on. Now let's get on with the show. Mara Wilson it's not often that you recognize someone from their childhood photos, but that's how most people remember Mara Wilson. This American child actress rose to fame in the early 90s after starring in films such as Mrs. Doubtfire, Miracle on 34th Street, and Matilda. And if you don't recognize any of those iconic films, there's a good chance it's past your bedtime. If that's the case, it's not such a bad thing. If you're anything like me, it'll hurt you to learn that all those films are now almost 30 years old. However, Wilson's adorable face wasn't enough to help her become a fully-fledged actress, and she quit film at the age of just 13. While many outlets state that she was just weighing up her career options, others report that the toxic pressures of the image-obsessed industry drove her into early retirement. Not being pretty enough cost her castings and callbacks. She even considered getting plastic surgery. But instead of going under the knife, Wilson used her experiences to become a full-time writer, penning the screenplay of Sheeple as well as her own memoirs in a book called Where Am I Now? She's also worked for McSweeney's, The Toast, The Daily Beast, and even Cracked.com, producing blog and opinion pieces. Although she steered clear of most acting roles, she did lend her voice to an anthropomorphic spider in Netflix's BoJack Horseman in 2016. You could say that cameo really had legs. Diamond Dallas Page Professional wrestling fans around the world should know that the careers of these big, bulky fighters are usually cut short by horrendous injuries. But multiple-time world heavyweight champion Diamond Dallas Page managed to wrestle a brand new career out of his life-changing injuries. In 1998, he ruptured several discs in his spine and was told by doctors he would never wrestle again. But instead of giving up, Dallas took up yoga to help heal his body. Regaining flexibility and mobility, Dallas took his yoga one step further and developed a process called dynamic resistance that added intensity to the training. Figuring he could make some serious bank on his new fitness routine, he wrote a book called Yoga for Regular Guys in 2005. Then, when most of Page's wrestling work dried up in the late 2000s, he developed the book into a series of workout videos called DDP Yoga. So this absolute beefcake managed to launch a yoga business off the back of his wrestling fame. 
That's a crazier move than he could have ever pulled off in the ring, right? While it's hard to picture this muscly meathead twisting himself into a pretzel shape, he's made a huge success out of the business. He even appeared on Shark Tank in 2014, seeking investment for a mobile app version of the workout. While he failed to secure the $200,000 investment he needed, in the following six days, DDP Yoga made over $1 million in sales. Now that's a figure anyone would bend over backwards for. S Club 7 This preppy pop band were a group of seven singers brought together by former Spice Girls manager Simon Fuller. Thanks to his artistic direction, their debut single, Bring It All Back, hit number one in the UK charts in 1999. They then peaked in the early 2000s with hit albums such as S Club, Seven, and Sunshine. Over the course of four years, the members earned about £600,000 each. That's just over $1 million in today's money. But their cheesy music simply wasn't meant to last, and the band split in 2003. While member Rachel Stevens went on to flourish in the UK music scene, the others struggled and never got their shot at individual stardom. Some members, like Hannah Spirit and John Lee, pay their bills by acting on the West End in occasional movie roles and British soap operas. But others just haven't been able to move on. And this is where it all gets a little cringeworthy. After a brief reunion tour in 2015, members Joe O'Meara, Bradley McIntosh, and Tina Barrett have stayed together as S Club 3. But far from making any new music, this band just fall back on performing their greatest hits and can even be hired for events like weddings and parties. Looks like this trio just can't let go of their once million dollar dream. Belle Gibson there are plenty of tragic stories of celebrity downfalls, but Belle Gibson certainly isn't one you should feel too sorry for. This Australian wellness blogger based her career off the claim that she cured her own terminal brain cancer with a simple mix of alternative therapies and diet changes. She shared her cancer-free lifestyle with the world by creating the Whole Pantry mobile app, which saw her make $420,000 at least $300,000 of which she claimed she donated. But in 2015, Gibson was called out for having failed to pay it on to the designated charities. And that, my friends, is when her wellness empire fell apart. Under intense scrutiny, Gibson finally cracked and revealed that she'd never had cancer to begin with. Gibson wasn't a victim. She was a fraud. It had all been a hook to get people to invest in her weird pseudo-scientific miracle app. To this day, Gibson has refused to donate the money to charity, and despite being fined $410,000 in 2017 for duping consumers, she's made no effort to pay it. She even rubbed it in the public's face back in 2019 by spending $15,000 on a luxury holiday to Africa. But just when he thought Gibson couldn't make it any worse, she then claimed she had been adopted by the Oromo, an ethnic community native to Ethiopia. In an interview, Gibson referred to Aromia as home and even claimed to have earned herself a new name, Sabantu. But no number of name changes could hide her past, and after having her history exposed, the Aromo quickly disowned her. Although the name supposedly conjures gentleness, sharpness, and exhilaration, I wonder if Sabantu is what they'll start calling scam artists in Ethiopia from now on. Ariana Richards do you remember the bit in Jurassic Park where young Lex saves the day by hacking into the park system, delivering the iconic line? It's a unique system. I know this. It really set the bar for 12-year-old hackers all over the world. But despite winning a Young Artist Award for the role, actress Ariana Richards never saw her silver screen career take off from there. From 1993, she recognized that the bit roles and small parts she was offered weren't going to help her career. So instead of taking more of these, the once child star left the industry in 2013 and focused her efforts into making art. Today, she's a successful professional painter. Still, it doesn't look like she's left the iconic role of Jurassic Park's Lex behind completely, seeing as this shot for the movie is still the header of her website. She sells signed photos of Lex from the site for just $33, and you can even buy a print of this picture she painted of Lex with a raptor for just $185. If this is what's been keeping her afloat for almost 10 years, then God bless those Jurassic Park fans. Robin Thicke 
The last person anyone wanted to be in 2013 was Robin Thicke. He was launched into the stratosphere of success when his song Blurred Lines, featuring Pharrell, dominated the Billboard's Top 100 for 12 weeks straight. But his career was over before it even started. An unrated video for the song was banned from YouTube for containing mostly naked models. Its lyrics came under fire for being seriously creepy. And then he was sued for plagiarism, by musical legend Marvin Gaye's family no less. Claiming Blurred Lines copied the 70s song Got To Give It Up, the Gays won $5.3 million and 50% of all future Blurred Lines royalty. Thick hit the career-ending trifecta that ruined his reputation and badly affected the release of his second album. You heard that right, he had a second album. Though you may not have heard of it, because it only sold about 25,000 copies in the US in its first week. A huge drop from the 177,000 sales of Blurred Lines in its first week. And that's saying a lot considering 36 seconds of Blurred Lines was made up by that woo noise. Despite the backlash, Thick stuck to his wheelhouse of singing and songwriting, and even collaborated with artists like Flo Rida and Pitbull. But after keeping a low profile from 2016 to 2019, he was announced as a panelist on the reality TV show The Masked Singer. While this gave him a boost back into the industry, he messed up by accidentally revealing the identity of one of the anonymous singers on Twitter. Maybe he should take a leaf out of Marvin Gaye's book and just give it up already. Jeffrey Owens While some of you probably remember Jeffrey Owens as the actor who portrayed Elvin Thibodeau on The Cosby Show, I bet you can't name a single other thing he's been in. After appearing in 44 episodes of the series throughout the late 80s and early 90s, the show came to an end in 1992. But Owens struggled to land high-flying acting work after that. He did appear in a few episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and Without a Trace in the 2000s. However, it was nothing close to his former stardom. To make ends meet in between these small roles as well as teaching and directing, in 2017, Owens started working at Trader Joe's in New Jersey. According to the Trader Joe's website, crew workers like Owen earn between $13 to $17 an hour. While that may not seem like a lot, the huge majority of actors belonging to the Screen Actors Guild of America only earn about $1,000 a year from acting jobs. He's since quit the position after being hounded by the media. But the press coverage of his situation raised him back into the limelight. It even helped him get roles in TV shows like Bless This Mess and The Haves and The Have Nots. So, while his career may have been reduced in scale, at least this Cosby Show veteran is no longer reducing items down to Trader Joe's. Nikki Blonsky The 2007 hit film adaptation of the musical Hairspray was the beginning and end of this actress's mainstream career. Nikki Blonsky was actually discovered at an open casting call for the film's lead back in 2006. After submitting an audition tape, she went from working in an ice cream shop to starring alongside John Travolta and Michelle Pfeiffer on the big screen. But even though she was nominated for several awards and even a Golden Globe for her performance, Blonsky's acting career stalled soon after. She picked up a leading role in ABC's 2010 TV show Huge, but from there, she was relegated to bit parts in TV and film. With offers stagnating and bills piling up, Nikki started working in a shoe store in 2011. Although she didn't seem too proud of the move and told the media she was just experimenting for a day at the boutique. The owner, on the other hand, confirmed that she was scheduled to work there two to three times a week. The media frenzy over her situation sadly forced her to leave the store. But soon after, she gained a cosmetology license and started working at Long Island Superstar Salon. She did everything from sweeping up hair to helping clients with their makeup. So, it seems you can take the girl out of Hairspray, but you can't take Hairspray out of the girl. While she's still pursuing her acting career, she also keeps herself afloat by selling her own merchandise at events like RuPaul's DragCon. And as RuPaul famously says, you better work! MC Hammer all you have to do is think of this rapper's name, and the hit tracks Can't Touch This and Too Legit To Quit start playing in your head. 
Renowned for his flashy dance moves and hammer pants, MC Hammer rapidly rose to fame in the late 80s. By 1991, Ford estimated his net worth to be $33 million. But by the mid-90s, Hammer's high-energy music style was relegated by the rise of R&B, and his popularity dropped. Along with the trail of irresponsible spending, Hammer filed for bankruptcy in 1995 with assets of $9.6 million against debts that neared $14 million. This career-ending wake-up call apparently triggered a rediscovery of faith, because in 1997, the rapper was ordained and became a pastor. He even claims that MC now stands for Man of Christ. Believe it or not, it only gets more bizarre from there. During the 90s, this lyrical miracle man also turned into a self-confessed super geek after getting interested in the tech surrounding music videos. From 1994 onwards, Hammer also invested his time in around eight different tech companies in Silicon Valley and eventually became a popular web mogul in the late 2000s. His expertise in the area was so valuable that he even gave lectures on social media marketing at Harvard and Oxford. But a resurgence in his musical popularity towards the end of 2010s saw him touring again. He graced the stage at venues like LA's Staples Center and brought back 90s nostalgia with his house party tour. Turns out this rapper really is too legit to quit. Freddie Prinze Jr. If you were a teenage girl in 1999, there was a good chance you had a poster of Freddie Prinze Jr. tacked to your bedroom wall. His acting roles in She's All That and I Know What You Did Last Summer launched his handsome face into the public eye. But after he was nominated for the Worst Supporting Actor at the Golden Raspberry Awards for his role in Scooby-Doo, his career began to flounder. Zoinks! He was later cast in the hit TV show 24 in 2010. However, the show's star, Kiefer Sutherland, was apparently so traumatically unprofessional that it made him want to quit acting altogether. That's right, there was more beef between these two sons of Hollywood than a Big Mac speed-eating contest. Speaking of beef, after bowing out of the limelight, Freddie Prinze Jr.'s career took a rather unexpected turn into the world of cooking. In 2016, almost out of nowhere, Prinze suddenly released his celebrity cookbook Back to the Kitchen, which was odd, seeing as most people weren't aware that he was ever really in the kitchen. It turns out his mother had tried to force him to go to a cooking school so that he had a backup plan if his acting career went rotten. But he's not just a cooking nerd, he's a regular nerd as well. In 2018, he set up Gaghead, a YouTube channel dedicated to tabletop and video games. And when he's not perched at the table, he also lends his voice to Canon Jarrus in Star Wars Rebels. He even made a voice cameo in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Between his cooking side gig and his nerdy hobbies, it turns out Fred wasn't the dullest member of Mystery Incorporated after all. Kevin Jonas the Jonas Brothers gained popularity way back in 2005 from their appearances on the Disney Channel. By 2010, this teen heartthrob musical trio had raked in approximately $35 million from album sales and world tours. But just like their boyish good looks, this wasn't meant to last. Stagnating record and ticket sales, along with a disagreement in terms of musical direction, led to the band splitting up in 2013. But as Nick and Joe continued their solo careers to stardom, Kevin turned his back on the celebrity lifestyle altogether. Instead, this floppy-haired teen dream fixed his sights on real estate and construction. He became a founding partner of a company called Jonas Werner, which sells custom builds like this $2.4 million manor. He even made a surprising cameo on The Real Housewives of New Jersey as a contractor. Not only that, he was also the co-CEO of The Blue Market, a social media advertising company thought to have a revenue of $56 million. But despite his many business endeavors, the lure of the music industry was too much to keep the Jonases apart. As with any washed-up ex-act, the trio inevitably reformed in 2019. It seemed the reunion was intended to help heal some long-standing rifts between the band, but I'm sure the $1.5 million the band pocketed per stop on the reunion world tour helped too. Oh, brother. Kevin Spacey It's ironic that Kevin Spacey is probably best known for his leading role in the TV show House of Cards, seeing how his career came tumbling down just like one. 
This two-time Academy Award-winning actor appeared in iconic films such as American Beauty and The Usual Suspects, raking in around $12 to $16 million a year up until 2017. That's when allegations of harassment and assault against Spacey began to surface. And in the era of the hashtag MeToo movement, this acting titan fell down hard. Netflix refused to continue producing House of Cards if Spacey was involved, and severed all ties with the actor, a move thought to have cost him at least $6.5 million in earnings alone. With many of his upcoming projects cancelled or shelved, the allegations took just a matter of hours to leave Spacey's career in ruins. But he doesn't seem to have taken it too badly, thanks to his current estimated net worth of some $100 million. In 2019, he found the time to jet across the world and do spoken word poetry in Rome before busking on the street with a blues band. <laughs> Now that he's no longer appearing on the silver screen, Spacey can be found flexing his acting muscles through YouTube videos. In one recent video, in an address to a conference called Bits and Pretzels, Spacey compares his own loss of work to the widespread unemployment caused by the coronavirus. I think it's safe to assume he's doing just fine. While the damage may already be done in Spacey's case, it seems like some of these celebs still have a chance of clawing their way back into Hollywood's good graces. Can you think of any other famous figures who have faded into obscurity, leaving you wondering, hey, what happened to them? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys.